Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to the 11th episode of Dirty Chess Tricks Against Sicilian. In this episode, I'm going to show you a wonderful tricky line against specific Sicilian Nashdor variation from the white perspective. The opening arises after the following order e4, c5, knight to f3, d6, d4, c captures d4, knight captures d4, knight to f6, attacking e4, knight to c3, defending, and now the characteristic Nashdorf move a6. So controlling the b5 square. The line I am going to recommend in this video starting with the move bishop to c4 known as Sozen variation and one of the favorite choice of Bobby Fischer. Here the obvious choice from the black is to play e6 blunting the diagonal of the bishop and black is all set to play the move b5 with a tempo. So accordingly white plays the move bishop to b3 and now b5 is the most popular choice by the black here. Okay, white is going to castle on the king side. And now you can see I have highlighted by the arrows, black has plenty of the good option. Now amongst them, bishop to e7 is the main line. However, black has frequently tried other options. In this video, we are going to concentrate on the move knight b to d7, which is popularized by Gary Kasparov. And black has a very cunning idea he wants to play knight to c5 and then taking the bishop pair and then slowly open up the game. Okay, white will continue here with rook to e1 and knight to c5 happens on the board which at first sight looks so good because you are achieving your target and white doesn't have any threat in this position. Well, when I searched this position in online database, I found out that there are more than 70 games played from this position including some master games and I feel very pity about the white player who lose from this position because as it turned out that knight to c5 is a big time disaster for the black. Here white has tried many options as I have highlighted by the arrows but there is one move in this position which completely give white a winning advantage. Before I move on, I like you to pause this video and find out what is that move which instantly put white in a driver's seat. Okay, let's see if you have find this move. Boom! <laughs> Bishop to d5 and black is completely busted. Black has mainly four good options over here and let's see each by turn how white can destroy them. The first move I want to consider is rook move, let's say rook to b8. Well after that white task is very easy, you can see it, right? Yup, it's knight to c6, forking two big guys, queen to c7 and now simple knight captures b8. If queen captures then the simplest is bishop check bishop to d7, bishop takes, knight takes and after the whole sequence it turns out that black has absolutely no compensation for this exchange sacrifice and instead of queen captures b8 if black continue here with e captures d5 then the task is very easy because after e captures d5 which is a check and bishop to e7 and knight to c6 we have pretty much same scenario where white is a clear exchange up. The second move I want to consider here is bishop to b7 which in fact played one time in my blitz game but I think here once again white get the winning gauge after the following continuation that is b4 attacking the knight. If the knight moves then the bishop drop so my opponent capture my bishop I capture his bishop and now by force black has to move this knight and it doesn't matter wherever this knight goes. Let's say in the game my opponent continue here with knight c to d7 but after pawn captures, pawn captures and the move knight captures e6, 
black position is already collapsing and even he's a pawn down. Let me show you quickly how my opponent position fallen apart. My opponent continue here with queen to b6. I played a knight to d5 attacking the queen. He continue with knight captures d5. I recapture with my queen attacking the rook in the corner. So he played rook to c8. But after knight captures g7, a double discover checks. So black king has to move. And after king to d8, knight to e6 check, king to e8, queen to h5 check, king to e7, bishop to g5 check, knight to f6, knight to c5, again discover check, king to d8, and the finally the deciding blow, queen to f7. And black resign at this position and he cannot deal the double threat and maybe he is fed up with his king dance. The third move I want to consider is what happens if your opponent accepts this piece sacrifice with e captures d5. Well after that my response is very obvious he is going to capture with the e pawn giving black a discover check and that means by force black has to move the king. Why? What happens if bishop e7? Well, the simplest reply is knight to c6 and black is going to lose a piece. So that's not good news for the black. So here by force, if black doesn't want to lose a piece, then he has to move the king and king to d7 is the only reply. Well, after that you can already see for a piece sacrifice, we already misplaced black king. White initiative doesn't stop here in many lines. Not only white get the piece back, but because black king is stuck in the center, he get a furious attack and a winning combination. Here white has a forcing sequence starting with the move b4, hitting the knight. Knight goes to the a4 and after knight captures, pawn captures and the move knight to c6, attacking the queen. One of the master game continue from here onwards, queen to b6, bishop to e3, queen to b7. But after the move c4, it is very clear that for one piece, not only white is able to put this knight on a wonderful square, but black king is stuck in the center and he has some horrible pawns to deal with it. It is very instructive to see how quickly a master has fallen apart. Black continue here with bishop to e7. So he desperately want to get his pieces in the game. But after white's hammering blows, such as bishop to c5, sacrificing a piece but hitting on e7. So black response is force. He has to defend the e7 bishop with rook to e8. And how smoothly white initiative continue with queen captures a4. So there is a discover attack on the king and the funny part is king cannot go anywhere otherwise black is going to lose a piece. In the game black find nothing better than capturing this bishop but after knight to a5 a discover check to the king, king to d8, knight captures queen, bishop captures knight and after all this transaction it turns out that okay Black has three minor pieces for the queen, but because his king is stuck in the center, this position is quite favorable to the white side. Last but not least, what happens if your opponent deny this piece sacrifice and take with his own knight, knight captures d5? Well, this is probably the easiest one because now white can simply capture this knight, so no longer white is a piece down. And you can already see there are so many attacking potential on e6. So black response is force. He has to continue with the move e5. And after this, our familiar territory, yup, it's knight to c6. Attacking the queen, queen to c7. And now the another forcing move, b4, hitting the knight, knight to d7. And again, white initiative will continue on the queen side with the move a4. So there is a threat of a captures b5 so black is forced to capture this pawn 
and after that instead of routinely capturing back white has this wonderful move in the picture b5 well black has two options whether to capture this pawn or continue with his kingside piece development if he continue with moves such as bishop to e7 then the problem in this lines are white can continue with bishop to a3 and still black cannot castle on the king side because the e7 bishop hang and if he try to be sneaky with the move bishop to d8 protecting the bishop and now ready to castle but there is not enough time as after knight to e4 this king is not going anywhere and the second option a captures b5 is neither good for the black as well because after knight captures b5 attacking the queen queen to b6 and c4 <laughs> you can see those wonderful knights sitting right into the guts of the black camp and black cannot do anything about it now to illustrate the danger in the black camp i like to show you one of the high level game where black continue with bishop to a6 trying to get rid of one of the knight white continue with bishop to e3 attacking the queen queen to b7 and now very simple queen captures a4 pinning down that poor bishop okay black plays bishop to e7 what else but now comes another threat rook e to b1 trying to get a discover check and nabbing the queen so black side step it with queen to c8 so still black is surviving but after white's next reply black simply plays the resign button before i show it to you i want you to pause this video and find out that wonderful move which forced the resignation are you ready have you considered this wonderful move knight to a7 bam creating a roadblock for the bishop and unfortunately black cannot deal with both the threat in the game after queen to c7 and queen captures a6 white emerge with a peace advantage and black still cannot able to castle on the king side Well I hope you enjoy and learn this amazing tricky line against Nostro Federation. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment on my video and I'll meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.